The Washington Post has suspended one of its political reporters for one month without pay after he made the grave mistake of retweeting a joke <gasps> that one of his female colleagues didn't like. Oh, heaven for offend. So uh, obviously we need to take uh, his wages away for a month and make sure that he knows he's a naughty, naughty boy. And I'm talking about Dave Weigel here, uh, a political reporter at the Washington Post. We've covered his stories. Uh, we've actually talked about him specifically on the show before. What he retweeted is this following tweet, every girl is bi. You just have to figure out if it's polar or sexual. Now, uh, immediately after that, a Washington Post national political reporter, Felicia Sonmez, shared her displeasure with that retweet, okay? And, and wrote publicly, of course, in a quote tweet, fantastic to work at a news outlet where retweets like this are allowed. And uh, the whole situation kind of snowballed from there, okay? Now, Weigel immediately decided to do away with the retweet. So he reversed the retweet and immediately apologized publicly, where he said, I just removed a retweet of an offensive joke. I apologize and did not mean to cause any harm. It turns out that there was also some internal conflict taking place. Uh, you know, there's the public display and then internally at the Washington Post, uh, there was a back and forth. For instance, Sanmez also confronted Weigel in an internal company Slack channel. She tagged him and wrote, I'm sorry, but what is this? She then added in the Slack channel uh, that the retweet sent a confusing message about what the Post's values are. Okay, before I move forward because there's so many little elements to this story. I also wanna note that Weigel both publicly apologized and then personally apologized to Sanmez. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm really sick of these stories, okay? I think the fact that they suspended him without pay for a month over a retweet over a joke that some of, the, some of his colleagues don't like, Sanmez doesn't like, it's his personal Twitter page. You don't like the joke, you don't have to like the joke. I thought the joke was kind of lame, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not such a delicate flower that seeing someone tweet that or retweet that makes me fall apart. And I would venture to say the majority of women in this country are also not delicate flowers who lose their minds over a joke they don't like. It is amazing to me that the Washington Post that provides cover over and over again for the very corporate politicians who screw over the American people, including mothers in this country who desperately need paid family leave, who desperately need affordable childcare, who desperately need housing in this country. Those are the people who, by the way, get screwed over by the Washington Post every day, every day. We did a 20 minute long segment on that yesterday, where Jeff Stein and Tyler Pager decided to write like this super lengthy piece, accounting this supposed melodrama between Joe Manchin and Joe Biden. And that's the reason why the Build Back Better agenda fell apart, completely ignoring the fact that Joe Manchin has personal financial interests and, and was going to blow that piece of legislation up no matter what, because he's looking after his own pocketbook. They completely ignored that information. To me, that is far more offensive then Dave Weigel retweeting a joke you don't like. If you're that delicate, get off Twitter, log off, log off. Yeah. We're, we're dealing with our rights being stripped away from us. And this is what your focus is right now? Yeah. You're offended by a joke on Twitter? Come on, ladies, wrap it up, move it along. We've got bigger fish to fry. We're not weak, delicate little flowers, okay? And for the prominent reporters who make a big deal out of nothing day in, day out, I've got no interest in it. And I certainly have no interest in pandering to that, that ideology. It's pathetic. So look, if you, the original tweet by Sonmez is no problem. She objects to Weigel retweeting that. I, 
I can how totally about, see. How about pull him aside and have a conversation with him privately? Yeah, I agree. How that is that? a way better way to go. And then he would have apologized to you and taken the tweet down. He wasn't reluctant to do it at all. Uh, but okay, you did it publicly, but I'm not gonna get on her for that. Okay, she's frustrated by that and she thinks maybe it's a, you know, how women are treated overall and why goes an important reporter watching the post, she puts out the tweet. He then immediately retracts and apologizes both publicly and privately. That is when you go, okay, hey, that worked, great. I'm glad that he retracted it and, and, and lessons were learned and, and, and women are not going to be you know, minimized here in their work, etc. Nope. No, nope, nobody can let it go. No apology is ever good yep, enough. Yep. There is no redemption ever for even the slightest offenses or the most ancient offenses. It doesn't matter. Everything's a capital penal, uh, capital punishment. Okay. And by the way, they suspend him. I don't know if she's still satisfied. No one is ever satisfied with anything. Okay. That's why you can't apologize. That's why uh, we live in a climate now where. Honestly, and this sucks because I think in some cases an apology is necessary. But if you apologize, you are admitting guilt and it's never good enough. And in this case, Weigel apologizing to her internally directly, not good enough. Apologizing publicly, doing away with the retweet, not good enough. So let's get to that really quick because someone, I came across this response to Weigel's apology and it absolutely makes sense. So a guy named Rob Henderson shares a study that was done on what the outcome is, what the response tends to be after someone apologizes, a public figure apologizes for something that he or she has done. Overall, the evidence suggests that when a prominent figure apologizes for a controversial statement, the public is either unaffected or becomes more likely to desire that the individual be punished. Yeah. And that is exactly what happened with Dave Weigel, where he is now suspended for a month without pay. So like that's the other half of this. We we now like celebrate doing away with people's income, right? Making sure that people either get fired, suspended without pay. Like does it make you feel better? Does that make you feel really good to know that someone is being deprived of their income over your hurt feelings? Over a joke that you didn't like? I don't like the joke either. Again, but I sure as hell would not be a, like this advocate for firing one of my colleagues or doing away with his or her income for a month because of my hurt feelings over a joke I don't like. Like we got what, what's going on? Like we're dealing with very real problems in this country right now. And the dominant discussion, the big divide over at the Washington Post is whether or not retweeting a stupid joke is acceptable. Yeah, so later in the story, we're gonna do a story about how cops let a guy drown, he's dead. They were suspended for a little while, but with pay. They still get paid, but Weigel doesn't get paid. So that's the crazy disparity in the country overall. But let's talk about media specifically. I remember Martin Bashir made a joke about Sarah, or made a reference to Sarah Palin that people found to be a little too over the top. Now looking back at it, Republicans make references like that. Literally eight times a day on cable news, nobody ever does anything about it. But he was made to apologize profusely, and then they fired him right afterwards. No, apologies never ever work. In fact, I've seen internal polling that shows no, it doesn't move the numbers at all. All it does is cement the idea that you were guilty. Right. Okay. So Trump and the Republicans are right, politically speaking and strategically speaking, to never apologize. So, but our side in an uneven playing field apologizes nonstop and gets fired anyway, gets punished anyway, gets their income taken from them anyway. Now, and this is important. Dave Weigel is not on our side. Dave Weigel is a mainstream media reporter. Sometimes he does good work, which separates him out from almost all the other reporters. But a lot of times I get super frustrated by his reporting, right? And I've defended people like Megyn Kelly, who I don't agree with at all. So she does something that is, does a, had a statement that I 100% disagreed with. But that was on NBC and they fired her over that identity politics, culture war issues, etc. But NBC brings on former generals who are defense contractors to hawk their own products. Oh, the Abrams tank is great and they don't tell anybody the guy's representing Abrams tank. And he's doing propaganda on NBC, it's never an issue. And how about insulting people? Well. Is it, does it depend on who you're insulting? Of course, Chuck Todd on NBC called Bernie Sanders supporters brown shirts. He called us Nazis. That's that, but that's okay. That's okay. No, not even a discussion of whether he should apologize, whether he should have his pay docked. No, you can call progressives 
anything you want and there's gonna be no repercussions. So the hypocrisy is out of control and not to the right wing. They're celebrating it. Well, first of all, you don't even know why he was reporting, okay? It's, you're just like, ah, yeah. Wait, what happened? I thought you guys Who were the freedom right of wing speech. Is celebrating it. Oh, oh no, it's all over my uh, my account. You know why? So I defended Weigel a little bit in the same way that we're doing here. They're like, oh yeah, I need to say it back in the time. It's your turn. Weigel's not on my side, okay? And second of all, it's not my turn or his Man, turn. Man, these people have no freaking principles at all. At right? all. Like they at run all. around crying about cancel culture day in day out, and then once someone they don't like is canceled, or they whatever, love it. They love it. They no. love cancel but culture. But for me, this is not about personalities. This is about principles, and it's about what actually matters. And I'm so sick of the nonstop distractions. I'm so sick of people who have prominent positions in corporate media of all places. Places, like making the story about them. Me, 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 me. I was offended. I was offended. Women are being raped. Women are being sexually assaulted. Women are having their entire bodies taken away from them by the government, which will get to decide whether or not they get to have abortions, whether or not they can take specific types of birth control. But hey, everyone, Felicia Sonmez is very offended by a retweet. Log off Twitter, homegirl. Log off. Oh, yeah. Again, bigger fish to fry. I'm so sick of these stories. It's endless, endless stream of I'm offended, I'm offended, I'm offended, I'm offended. Be offended. There's no constitutional right against you being offended. We live in a country that's diverse, that's full of hundreds of millions of people who have their own thoughts, their own views. There's nothing protecting you from being offended, okay? If there's evidence, that you're working in a hostile work environment, which by the way, she has sued the Washington Post over that. And that case got thrown out of court. She's filing an appeal. Oh, Forget about it, no, I didn't even know that part. That's a very relevant Jesus part because it Christ. seems like she's trying to bolster her her appeal here. Yeah, and she's not, by the way, Sonmez randomly, I don't know if she has anything tur Turkish background at all, but in Turkish means one that won't turn off. Okay, so she if definitely she, will not turn if it she, off. Like I said before, if she had made that first tweet, no problem, okay? But guys, I'm asking the whole country, when is it enough? When is it enough when someone apologizes and retracts? Or do we have to fire them all? Guess what, everybody's gonna get fired. But and, and the funny thing is, we're the most unbiased people here, cuz you can't fire us, I own the company. And I get to make the decisions. So I'm not worried about cancel culture at all on a personal level. At least 12 times different wings, right wing, left wing, middle wing have tried to cancel me. I don't care, they can kiss my ass, okay? I'm actually looking out for other people. I know it's a wild idea. Firing everyone over the smallest offense and the most ancient offense is nuts. And Sonmez, did you ever complain? about the corporate bias at Washington Post. No, that's totally Let fine. Let me analyze all of your stories and see if you were like, hey, Washington Post. How about that one that Anna mentioned just yesterday, Jeff Stein and Tyler Page, this outrageous article that pretends that money in politics doesn't have any effect at all. It doesn't even mention Joe Manchin's millions that he's making off of coal and pretends that it's about his hurt feelings. Weren't you outraged by that? Cuz that screws over the American people a thousand times more, a million times. We don't have child tax credit, we don't have paid family leave, we don't have lower drug prices because of propaganda that the Washington Post did just yesterday. Are you bothered by that? No, but you got a lawsuit and you gotta get famous. So you're gonna pretend to be super outraged by a slightly off color joke instead of the real cancer that's in mainstream media. Exactly.